Michael Scherer is a noted political reporter for The Washington Post who covers campaigns, Congress, and the White House. He's also one of the reporters who broke the story yesterday on President Biden shocking many people in his own party by calling for this complete remaking of the early nominating calendars. Michael, it's great to see you. Congratulations on, on breaking the story. I guess my first question, journalist to journalist, is why, is this a, why was this a breaking story? Why was this something that was done unexpectedly and, and as a surprise? This is something people have thought about, as we've been talking about, for years. Yeah, not just thought about, but just this year, there have been three public hearings. Uh, there were 20 states, uh, if you include Puerto Rico, so 19 states plus Puerto Rico, who applied uh, and gave presentations about why they should go first. There was extensive discussion. And if you went to the betting lines, talking to members of the Rules and Bylaws Committee uh, before yesterday, nobody would have had what ended up happening on their bingo card. It, it ultimately came down to the president of the United States Everybody on that committee is there because the president put them there. They're all loyal to him. And, and like you said, only two dissented from his, uh, his wishes here. And, and it turned out that President Biden wanted to send a message with this. And, and I think this is a big message. Now, right now, he doesn't really have a primary challenge. He says he's running. If that's true, practically, this doesn't matter much, uh, this cycle, because he's not going to have contested primaries in any of these states. Uh, at least as far as we can see right now. But he has sort of broken the seal on tradition, and he's made clear the, the Democratic Party that he wants to leave behind, and, and then he wants it to be identif to identify, uh, you know, with, with his presidency. He's also made clear that he has a message for people in several of these key swing states that will decide who the next president is. He's going to the people of Georgia and saying whether Republicans change the state or not, I want you to be more important. I want you to go early in this process. Uh, and, and again, I think that's a messaging play uh, by the president of the United States as he as he prepares for re-election. So you make an interesting point that he doesn't uh, currently have uh, a named challenger or somebody who'll challenge him for the next election. But if he did, would this be more relevant? Because South Carolina was the state in sure. which Joe Biden's uh, quest for the presidency was cemented. In fact, South Carolina uh, officials went out of their way tonight to say we were not part of this decision. This was not uh, we didn't lobby for this. Unquestionably, this makes it harder to challenge Joe Biden. If, if another Democrat comes forward in the next few months and says he's he's not the guy for the job next time, I'm going to mount a serious campaign. Uh, the biggest weaknesses he had in, in 2020 when he was running were Iowa and New Hampshire. And it looks like those two states right now uh, will probably not be able to award any delegates. And it'll probably be very difficult for candidates to campaign there because New Hampshire says it's not going to follow these rules. And Iowa is now out of the out of the early state list. And, and, and like you said, he's starting with the state that made him the nominee in 2020, South Carolina. So it, it's clearly an insurance policy against a, a serious primary challenge as well. You just you just said New Hampshire says they're not going to follow this. What does that mean? New Hampshire is going to have its own primary when it feels like it? <laughs> Uh, yes. So, so the, you know, the, the, the history of this is that the states have struck a truce with the parties, and now that truce is broken, at least on the Democratic side. And uh, New Hampshire's threat has always been that we will always go first as the first primary in the nation. They, they gave dispensation to Iowa because it was a caucus. It's in their state law. They have a Republican governor. They have two Democratic senators. All three of those right now are saying there is no way we are following what the Democratic Party is going to do. There's no one really saying that that's going to change. So almost certainly what is going to happen is New Hampshire will continue to be the first major primary uh, that is run in the United States. Republicans will compete there. And Democrats, if they do compete there, will face serious sanction from the Democratic Party. Because uh, you know another thing that's happened here is the Democratic Party has passed rules that will make it much more painful than it was in 2008 when Michigan and, and uh, uh, Florida tried to step out of line. Not only does it take away delegates from the nominated convention in these states that, that disobey the party rules, it will also sanction the candidates who campaign in these states directly. Huh. And that means even if they put their name in the ballot. So if, if I want to challenge Joe Biden, for example, I put my, I put, uh, uh, my name on, on, on the ballot in New Hampshire. The Democratic Party can keep me from going on debate stages. They can take away my data, and they wow. guarantee that none of the none of the uh, uh, delegates I win in New Hampshire will count towards anything at the nominating convention. So they've they've definitely toughened the rules 
uh, from last time. And, and so I think it's also very likely, we don't know this yet because Iowa Democrats haven't said, that Iowa also stays first. Again, Republicans are going to go first in Iowa, as is tradition. Democrats can simply tie themselves to the Republicans. They will have what is what amounts to a straw poll. It, you know, won't award delegates, but you know, probably will get some coverage if a certain candidate wins. Um, and and uh, and so you'll have the first two contests. Democrats won't be playing in, and then we'll go to South Carolina, where delegates will start being awarded. Then to Nevada, then to Georgia, and then to Michigan. Which means, as Chris and I were discussing earlier, we journalists may end up in Iowa and New Hampshire um, in early January of uh, 2024. Thanks, Michael. You ruined my two years it, of planning. It, 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 if you're covering Republicans, you're going to be there. That's right. right. All right. Uh, I was not planning on having this conversation with you tonight. So it was an interesting story, an interesting scoop, and an interesting set of developments. Thanks for your reporting. Washington Post national political reporter Michael Scherer, thanks for your time tonight.